Hey guys, so just for me to qualify this, I've always respected Pastor Gavin Ortland. I think he's a genuine Christian brother who respectfully disagrees with his Catholic brothers, but he recognizes us as Christians and I've enjoyed his debates with Trent Horn, although I think Trent Horn wins them all. I think Trent Horn wins all his debates uh, for the record, but um, I like the way Gavin is very charitable and honest in his opinions, even though his opinions are wrong. I believe he's sincere, even though he's sincerely wrong. And I, and, and I respect that he respects us as brothers. And if I'm not mistaken, after their debates, uh, Trent and him would go out for drinks and have a cigar together. Um, so he recognizes us as brothers. So I really like him. And, um, you know, he gives challenging arguments for his faith. He, he's very bright, very educated man. He, uh, he defends the Protestant position very well. This is why I was very surprised when Gavin Ortland's father, Pastor Ray Ortland, recently endorsed Kamala Harris. And you might say, well, what does his father have to do with him? Well, if you recall, Gavin resigned from being pastor of his church, I think it was in California, to go full-time as a Catholic, as a, as a Protestant YouTuber, but under but it's under his father's ministry, I believe it's Renewal Industries, based out of uh, Nashville. And he's the, he, you know, or Ortland's a, a theologian, like a little uh, legitimate, legit Protestant theologian. That's why his arguments are challenging. You know, they're wrong, but you have to think through them and, you know, look through the scriptures really diligently to, to defend our faith when you debate a guy like him. However, he's the resident theologian for his father's ministry. So he's involved with his father. It's not like oh, me and my father, have, you know, we have disagreements. I love him, but his theology is in mine. So he's tied pretty tightly with his father. And I've never heard Gavin give any political endorsements. So I'm not saying that he's endorsing Kamala, but I'm just saying, if you love Gavin Ortland, this is pretty crazy to me that his father would tweet this. This is his father, the pastor, Ray Ortland. Never Trump, this time Harris, always Jesus. And then, of course, you know, for the record, you know, there's a lot of different Protestant denominations, but evangelicals, which I would consider myself for 30 years before I came home to the Catholic Church, evangelicals, most of them would disagree with that. Most evangelicals, 81% uh, of them are voting for Trump. So he got big backlash because a lot of people like him. He's a good preacher. like his son. He's gifted. He's real educated as well. So a lot of people like him. You know, he's not a bad guy, but his politics are way off base for a Christian worldview. So he got a lot of backlash. So he deleted it and said, I deleted my post because I was misinterpreted. I don't know how you misinterpreted that. I mean, because he went on to say this and he said, abortion is a horrible evil. Yes. According to the Catholic Church, is the preeminent issue of our day. The number one issue, if you're voting, is abortion. And according to Pope Francis, it's the gravest of mortal sins. It's like hiring a hitman. In fact, Pope Francis said this the other day in Belgium, criticizing their law. And the Belgian prime minister, you know, the, you know these, these liberals hate free speech. He thought it was horrible that a head of state would say such a such a thing about their laws because uh, Pope Francis said make no mistake talking to reporters in Belgium make no mistake abortion is killing a human baby it's like hiring a hitman he uses that phrase a lot I like that it's like hiring a hitman it's the best analogy because it is you're hiring a doctor to kill your baby so this was just like I think yesterday or day before the Prime Minister of Belgium criticized Pope Francis so Abortion is a horrible evil, but the evils on the other side have risen to levels that jeopardize the foundational rule of law in our country. I am thinking long term and voting for us to have a national renewal in the future. So he is just repeating the lie of the left, the left wing media and the Democrat Party that Trump is a threat to the rule of law. So either he is just the most naive. I mean, you could be an expert in one field and totally stupid. Like you could be an expert theologian, but be so naive in political science. And obviously this guy 
is extremely naive in what's happening in the world because the th number one abortion is the preeminent issue all other it, all other issues are way secondary to abortion but even if he thought the rule of law was more important than abortion even if that was true the people that are attacking the rule of law are the democrats never has a political party weaponized the the judicial system of this country to go after a political opponent like they've gone after Trump. Legal scholars on the left, even Alan Dershowitz, a long, a lifelong Democrat, uh, Harvard law professor, said what the Biden administration has, is unprecedented, and and they're and they're twisting the laws to go after Trump and all these Democrat, um, they're using all these Democrat attorney generals in every state to go after him. People see it. This is why so many Democrats are leaving. They're like, whoa, these guys are like tyrannical. Tulsi Gabbard, a lifelong Democrat, is fully not only endorsing Trump, but campaigning. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., again, a Kennedy, lifelong Democrat. He sees the, 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 the threat to the rule of law and to democracy that these people pose. Not only weaponizing and putting people in jail, like pro-lifers, there's pro-life Men and women who in the past, if they got arrested in front of an abortion clinic for blocking it, the local police would throw them in jail, maybe just write them a citation, and it'd be fine. Joe Biden has made this a federal offense, has raided a traditional Catholic man with like eight kids. Five o'clock in the morning, went in with long guns, 20 FBI agents. It's pointing guns at the children and the wife to take this guy away in handcuffs because of an offense he did years ago before Biden was even in office. And he's facing 20 years in jail. An 89-year-old woman who survived the Soviet Union gulag is facing the rest of her life in jail because of this. These people are tyrants. These people are attacking the rule of law. These people are attacking their political oppo opponents with such force of the government. It's scary. And not only that, Robert RFK Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard said the censorship these people are pushing, the censorship. I was, I'm just a little guy. You know, I'm just a blue-collar guy. I do this, you know, whenever I get a chance. And they demonetize me. So, you know, these little commercials that come up, we get a few cents, you know, I make a hundred bucks a month on it. It helps, you know, especially under Biden. Every, every you know, hundred bucks pays for gas for the week, you know? So, um, when Biden defeated Trump in 2020, I talked about the irregularities and they demonetized me. It was like for like six months, they demonetized me. It was like a warning, but... Guys that have bigger platforms were taken down, were taken down. The censorship is real. The government, you say, well, you know, YouTube, Facebook are owned by private individuals. But we've seen them testify that the government put pressure on them. The CIA paid uh, Facebook like $200 million to suppress things. They pressured them if they didn't. So they're using, you know, private companies to suppress our free speech. But they publicly said, John Kerry recently said, it might be time to get rid of the First Amendment. Uh, Tim Walsh and Kamala Harris first said, you know, the, the, uh, freedom of, you don't deserve freedom. Of, the, they said you don't deserve, they both said this, you don't deserve the privilege of free speech if it's hate speech or misinformation. Well, number one, who determines if it's hate speech? Who determines if it's misinformation? The whole point of freedom of speech is to let people give their opinions and debate and let the truth win. And what the Democrats don't understand, like Kamala Harris and Tim Walsh, is it's not a privilege, it's a right. It's not a privilege that the government gives us and can take it away. It's a right given by God. And that's the difference between Democrats and Republicans. Democrats think who's ever in power gives rights to the people and can take them away. Republicans feel this is a republic, not a democracy, a republic. And in a republic, we have certain rights from God that no man can take away. So uh, Ray Ortland is is the stupidest man in the world when it comes to political science. He might be a really bright theologian and he might be smart in other areas, but no one's an expert in everything. And he is a dummy when it comes to political science. If he thinks Trump, if he thinks Trump is a threat to the rule of law, under COVID, all these Democrat governors acted like the communist Chinese and locked down everybody. And they were mad because Trump didn't act like the fascist they claimed he was. He gave the power to the governors. He, ha he could have taken total control. If he was a dictator, that would have been the time because Newsom acted like a dictator. Uh, 
Cuomo acted like a dictator, but in the Republican states, we have freedom. You know, I have people coming down from north to Florida like, man, I feel like I just left communist China and I'm in, <laughs> I'm in a free country. I'm like, you're in a free state, brother. So the threat to the rule of law, the threat to democracy, the threat to the church, and, and that's what communists are. They're a threat to the church. They're a threat to the rule of law. They're a threat to freedom of speech or the Democrats. So Ray Ortland, man, this guy's got to get it together. And uh, Gavin, if you're watching, man, I hope you don't have the same beliefs as your father. Uh, and if you don't, you should come out publicly and denounce that because that was foolishness. And he's supporting evil, which is evil in itself. You know, some, some, someone smarter than me once said, for evil to prevail, all it takes is for good men to do nothing. God bless and stay Catholic.